She's dead. Wrapped in plastic. Welcome to the Twin Peaks Podcast. Everyone, please take a seat. Welcome, everyone, to episode six. <laughs> yes, yeah, six of the Twin Peaks podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Melanie. I'm Brad. And I'm Caitlin. Season one, episode six Cooper's Dreams. Cooper and Truman have tea with Log Lady and discover a macabre crime scene in the woods. And Audrey takes a job at her dad's department store. I was confused as to why this one's called Cooper's Dreams. I guess there's a few a few things from his dreams that come up in this episode, but I thought this would have been a better title for episode three. Yeah. Where he actually had a dream, but... What was the title of episode three again? It was called Zen or the Skill to Catch a Serial Killer. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. The Tibet one. Yeah, last episode I completely forgot after listening to it that I should have asked you guys more in detail about Mike slash Gerard like why do you think he has why do you think the one-armed man has two completely different stories like in Coop's dream he's Mike and cut off his own arm after seeing the face of God and in reality he claims to be a shoe salesman named Gerard who lost his arm in a car accident did you guys have any thoughts or is he lying or is he my thinking is that the the dreams are well clearly they're all symbolic and that um, it may be more things that apply to uh, the one-armed man in the dream may apply to other people in real life. Okay. But they're all the, he needs all the pieces to uh, make the puzzle fit. Mm-hmm. I agree completely. Okay. Brad, was this a green light go episode? As opposed to a red light episode? <laughs> well, I'll say uh, this, like, because they say in the end of the last episode, um, I think Horn says green light. Does he? Yeah, it's it's when um him and uh um Leo Leo yes when he's in the woods with, Le- with Leo he says something like uh he, he says the, he says the actual words green light oh <laughs> so my thinking was that that would actually be the beginning of you know pushing forward and this episode definitely moved forward though the first shot begins with a giant red moon that's the biggest red light of all so yeah it opens up and Coop doesn't tolerate sleep his sleep being interrupted I guess his brain needs to be rested. I love how I love Cooper being a little off this episode because of the the disruptions. Yeah. He really doesn't like it when he has no control over his environment. Yeah. Mm. He even said those exact same words. (laughs) 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 Fourth morning is an early start. What are you gonna say, Mel? I have in my notes, damn Icelanders. <laughs> damn Icelanders. He would never say that. It's only damn. It's only damn good coffee. Yeah, I know. It's always in the positive, but that's what I wrote. Damn, damn Icelanders. Damn is a positive for him. I know. Yeah. So the next scene, he's getting some, some coffee and stuff. I couldn't tell if that was supposed to be later, or if he got up immediately and went there, because Audrey's up too. So I'm not sure if it's still four in the morning in that scene or. Because he also says, I can't talk, I'm late. How could you be late if it's four in the morning? But <laughs> Yeah, I, I assumed it was kind of later. And when he walked in, he was he was holding a coffee mug before he even sat down. And the coffee mug didn't match the ones on the tables. Did he bring his own mug? Oh, well, did it say FBI al- on it? <laughs> also, he's, like wiping, know, was... he's wiping off the mug, too. Maybe he just grabbed one from a dirty mug from another table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I need it now. <laughs> well, it's probably his prized possession, his prized coffee mug. He just, you know, habitually cleans it all the time. And Audrey and Cooper have a little talk. Audrey is 18. Yes, she is. I like how they put it, like, like one year past the legal age. Yeah. Well, depending. Isn't it 17? 18 is legal in the U.S. Oh, really? It's 17 in Canada, I think. 
isn't it? I have no idea. Oh, I don't know. It, it's 18 in Alberta. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I think it... I think well, it, exactly legal, then, anyways. I think it varies by state and province oh, in both really? countries, doesn't it? That's very likely, yes. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. She's 18, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly legal. <laughs> <laughs> the way he asked her that, too, is a little shifty. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you, Audrey? <laughs> Why are you asking? No reason. Yeah, but, but he like he completely cuts her off too. She's like, "Hey, um, I'm 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 on the case. I'm gonna help you out. Um, look, I got a busy day. Let's uh." <laughs> yeah, he's not falling for her charms this time around. Oh, run along, Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> kind of seemed it that he warmed up as they continued talking. Like at first, he didn't want to talk to her at all, but yeah, he was grumpy. <laughs> but yeah, she she desperately wants to uh, impress him. It seems. Yeah. What happens next? We go to Jerry. (laughs) (laughs) Leg of lamb. (gasps) Foodborne illness. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, Salmonella. Uh, We have Leland come in. Oh, yes. He's looking worse and worse. Yeah. He's just looking like he just got out of bed and whatever. I'm trying to question, like, is Leland, like... I like. I understand he lost his daughter and it was tragic and that will destroy someone's life, but there's got to be more to it than that, right? More to what? His breakdown? Him, yeah, his complete breakdown. I, I mean, it feels that way. There's maybe like a buildup of stress, maybe his job or whatever, and this finally just pushed him over the edge. And his psychic wife. <laughs> <laughs> psychic or psycho? <laughs> Sorry, I, kind of, I kind of completely forgot that he worked for uh, Horn. Yeah. Uh, until this, because, you know, we haven't seen him together in a while. Um, yeah, since the <laughs> first episode. Right. And, I mean, is is shifty and in all up into the crazy antics that uh, Ben is into, I kind of wonder if Leland's maybe worse off than we suspect. You mean that he was involved in those shifty dealings? Yeah. Good series going. Jerry wears some pretty crazy shirts. <laughs> <laughs> buttons all over the place. and yeah. I couldn't tell if that was a, like a Chinese-inspired shirt or... Well, he was just in Iceland. Maybe, Maybe it's Icelandic, Icelandic inspired. Shirt. I don't know. I don't know what their costumes are like. Yeah. Crazy colors, no doubt. But it's hard to tell what's happening with fashion back then. <laughs> it could have just been the 90s. Yeah. Yes. Who knows? Yes. That could have been perfectly like acceptable shirt to wear in everyday life back then. Back then? You're talking about it as if it's like 100 years ago. <laughs> It, it, it was, was what the it, 90s it, it wasn't <laughs> in ye olde times of the 1990s <laughs> um what's the name of his um icelandic uh lady Hepa. the giant Hepa. Hepa. like a hippo Hepa. <laughs> Hepa filter yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> move on to Jacques apartment or so i saw that clown finally and that is scary yeah that is <laughs> looks like it had leaves for hair or something i don't know i couldn't tell <laughs> It looked like a woodsy clown. But anybody that has a leaf, like a, a leaf, a clown painting in their house definitely has a uh, serial killer potential, I would say. <laughs> definitely. Because huh. hmm. the natural response is to be terrified of clowns. Yes. Anyone who likes clowns is clearly psycho. <laughs> Didn't Manson, like, paint a bunch of clowns? <laughs> I think that was uh, Gacy, I think. John Wayne Gacy. Oh, yeah. I think. He was a clown. He was a clown. No, oh yeah, maybe. But I thought he painted clowns, though. Oh. I don't know. I'll have to they all look. painted clowns. They all painted clowns. <laughs> they all did. <laughs> <laughs> That's why clowns are evil. And uh, we find out a jock's blood on Leo's shirt. Did we know that before this episode, or no? No. Yeah. I think we just found out it was the same blood type, though. Well, well, before they even said that, Cooper said... It's Jacques' blood on Leo's shirt or something. Maybe he's just going with that's his intuition. That's so that's what he said, and then right. and then they kind of confirmed it because it's the same blood type. But it's yeah, it's not a real confirmation. It's just the same that's, blood type. That's very confusing to me. What's what's really weird is now now we know for a fact that Bobby has completely loused everything up. Uh, how so? Well, because if they if he planted a shirt with Laura's blood, then it would have been a piece of cake. But like, now he's confused the crime scene so much mm. that now, for some reason, Jacques has Leo's shirt with Jacques' blood on it. So, I mean, luck- luckily Cooper's got his magical dreams to fall back on to figure this out, <laughs> because otherwise it's completely destroyed. Yeah. What I want to know is how'd that porno get stuck to the ceiling? 
Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you want to know. <laughs> it never showed what he was looking at or like how it was held up there. I just assumed it was stuck somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and he held it with tweezers, so. <laughs> I would imagine it would be kind of a... Ugh. There was also a matching violin picture on another wall that goes with the clown picture. Oh, was it scary? <laughs> Equally scary? or? <laughs> no, it was just done in the same style. Oh. Um, it wasn't scary. Maybe there's something menacing about violins that I just don't get, but... How about clowns and violins? Mm. Clowns playing violins? I wonder if Jacques, <laughs> I wonder if Jacques lives with his grandma. <laughs> there's no ceramic figurines, though. Exactly. <laughs> That's how you know. Yeah. <laughs> when they opened the cupboard, um, there's some pretty strange pictures. They had, like, photographs taped to the inside of that cupboard there. Of the, uh, the cabin? In the kitchen. Yeah. There's all kinds of... Was it all different cabins, or...? It must have been the same cabin. Okay. What else was in there? Um, strange pictures of people, and... Yeah. I just remember getting the impression that they're really weird. Mm-hmm. I just got a quick glance at them, because I was writing, like, mad, but... <laughs> <laughs> mm. I liked, uh... Yeah, Harry was, like... Jacques was working in the lumber field until he acquired a little excess tonnage. Then he became a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little slight jab there at Jack. <laughs> yeah, excess tonnage. Harry's trying to spice up his personality with some jokes. Yeah, <laughs> he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying really hard. There's also another excellent moment. So Cooper wanted a donut and coffee, which he got. So he takes one bite of the donut and hands everything to Andy. <laughs> and as soon as Cooper like starts talking and and walks away, Andy starts eating the donut. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I did not see that. I didn't see that. That's twice. awesome. I feel like this is not the day to mess with Cooper's donut. No. No. You bite your hand off. <laughs> no. mm. oh. And he acted like when Harry gave him that coffee, he a- he drank it and acted like it was heroin or something. <laughs> Like he, almost, he almost had an orgasm when he drank that coffee. <laughs> it is heroin for him. He lives on that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I understand all too well. <laughs> uh, so Shelly dropped out of the 11th grade to marry Leo, we, we discovered. Where oh are Shelly's parents? Yeah, I'm wondering that too. I think they're dead. They must be. <laughs> Someone was- had to sign off on that because you can't get married until you're an adult. Yeah, that's true. Well, she failed a grade or two. Yeah. Mm. Or she got herself emancipated if she was uh, independent enough. Yeah, her situation didn't improve if her parents were horrible, too. Mm. <laughs> Bobby also doesn't know how to handle a gun. <laughs> keeps <laughs> going through the little scene, keeps pointing it at, keeps pointing it at Shelly. This scene made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely nervous, yes. Like, I, I don't like guns in real life, but generally I can, you know, watch any kind of action movie or anything that has tons of, you know, people shooting guns. Yeah. But this, there was something just too real and too frivolous about the gun in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> just waving it around and just oh. kind of like, you know, yeah. pointing it randomly. Yeah, every time he, every time he pointed it in her direction, I winced a little. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's just kind of too, a little too playful. Yeah. 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 But he's acting all macho. He's like, oh, I'm, this is what I would do if Leo was here. And then Andy comes to the door and he, like, shits his pants. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So, yeah, he's not he's not as tough as he acts. Well, we'll get back to his toughness later in the episode. But. <laughs> True. So there's a... Behind Big Ed's gas bar, there's, like, a big dirt hill. You can so tell it's California. It's just the, the trees are sparsely populated... The ground is covered in, like, dry pine needles and stuff, or just dirt. Like You're obsessed with that. <laughs> it's so obviously not Washington. It makes me sad. I'm sure California is a beautiful state as well. Yeah, but it's not Washington. <laughs> There's no fog in California. No, it's true. As far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys as upset by this as Matt is? <laughs> I, I didn't really uh, notice it exactly, but... Uh, <laughs> keep an eye out. <laughs> Are Big Ed and Norma breaking up? It seems a bit unnecessary. I mean, I understand that um, Nadine is a crazy person, and like if Ed were to leave her, it would probably cause her some further mental instability. But she's already crazy. You're not doing any favors by letting her not get crazier. You don't think she would do something drastic if, if she found out? Well, why doesn't he like seek some actual help for her? 
Like like Doctor Crazy Town. Oh God, there's got to be somewhere someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think of them, Caitlin? Do you care? <laughs> um, it not really. It seems I don't know, just more of a extraneous thing. You know, yeah. they you know were just sort of them being together was just kind of like a way for them to spend time and sort of be happy. But you know, they've got life to take care of. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Let's definitely move on. Yeah, I don't... I, uh, every time they come up, I just want to skip over it. But I figure... <laughs> I sh- they must have some fans out there. What, Ed and Norma? Ed and Norma, yeah. Oh, mm, well, I think they're perfectly nice people. <laughs> yeah. They are, but they're not interesting. I, I do I, I do like the characters, and, I, and I'm and i okay with the plot, because I feel like... I feel like there's no excuse for Norma to keep it up. And Ed, I understand why he keeps it up, but I feel it's a just a, it's a terrible situation. Terrible all around. I don't think they're breaking up anyways, per se. I think they're just kind of taking a break, which is kind of a different matter altogether. Red light. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey's job interview. Don't you wish you could control your job interview, how it goes, like her? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Listen, this is how I would done. feel terribly guilty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd be like, this is what I want. <laughs> I'll call my daddy. <laughs> I'll tear my shirt in half and call my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> she is resourceful. With a name like Emery Battis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a most unfortunate name. What do you think of him? Do you think he's, uh, I don't know, in on any shenanigans at all or... He's definitely in on enough to know what the hell's going on at the perfume counter. Because he says something about, like, uh, um, you know, um, our elite clientele or something along that lines protecting it's a their... particularly uh, sensitive yeah. is the word he used. Yeah. I think he knows what's going on, which really makes me question why he's going to let this happen if he does. Because she threatened him. <laughs> he's got what, too much to lose. <laughs> yeah. But he, couldn't he go directly to her father and say, hey, this is what just happened? He could. I guess it's his word against hers at that point. But. Yeah, but is she is her father really going to take her side? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. maybe not. But that guy doesn't know that. Yeah. True. He looks like a coward. Yeah. He's got beady little eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, yeah. you're so judgmental. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Just a poor actor trying to feed his family. <laughs> <laughs> the gazebo. <laughs> the revelations. Oh, my God. James' oh. family are all deadbeats. <laughs> Sob story. Hmm. But the thing is, these aren't James secrets. These are other people's secrets that tangentially affect James. <laughs> That's true. Mm, I guess, but it's still, I don't know, it still kind of reflects on him, I guess. Donna's just going to spread it around the town and his <laughs> mom and dad will be ostracized by the adults. <laughs> oh, they probably already are. I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. Donna's parents seem to kind of be like, oh, you know, when they found out about his mom not being around and stuff. But, mm. but I mean, also, it's like, I feel like James has secrets. Yeah, besides, besides. Yeah, I mean, there is as much as we don't know about Laura Palmer. I'm pretty sure James knows at least some more than he's letting on. Yeah. Hmm. I think he's got secrets, and trying to talk about uh, not wanting to have secrets uh, just annoys me. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys find that Donna's and James's relationship are probably mostly based on trying to find out what happened to Laura? Because that's all they ever seem to talk about. I don't know. They said they were in love before she yeah, died. Yeah, but they always like they always just talk about Laura. I feel like like yeah. they're ridiculously cliche teenagers. Yeah, mm. that's true. Well, th- it was a pretty monumental thing in their lives because Laura was like a huge part of each of their lives. I mean, if that's what mo- they're both thinking about most of the time, I wouldn't really expect them to talk about much else. Mm. Mm. For some reason, I wrote donuts in caps. Well, they're eating. They're yes. eating the donuts with latex gloves on. Oh yeah, I found that they were like not consistent with the glove wearing either. Like sometimes they would handle a piece of evidence without any gloves, and then another scene they would have glove all, all have gloves on. Like a, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Continuity person on set was not doing their job. No. <laughs> um. So the red drapes, reference to his dream. What weirds me out about is when he pulls out the magazine. He's like, ah, it's Laura Palmer. How do you know? Red drapes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a leap, a leap in logic? I mean, th- I, I will grant him um, you can connect red drapes from the photo, from the photo in the magazine to the photo in the cabinet. But where Laura Palmer comes into the mix is nowhere. I guess he's just stating his hunch. 
But they are taking it as fact, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Harry's just going along with it, because yeah. that's what he does. This mm-hmm. picture is Laura Palmer. Okay, Mr. FBI, man. <laughs> uh, well, was, what, el- what else happened in that scene exactly? There was they decided to go mute. take a walk in the woods. Yeah. Uh, didn't they also see Leo's truck in yes. the magazine? Yeah, right. I don't... Why was that picture in the magazine? I, like, Yeah, there's a question. What is his ad for? Is it? Is it... Is he looking for a prostitute? Is he selling drugs through the magazine? What's happening? Is he pimping out his truck? (laughs) (laughs) Please. This is a beautiful truck, guy. (laughs) I bet you it's a sweet pimp pad inside, though. In the the truck? In the truck, yeah. Yeah. In the... In the, uh... The sleeper area? No, in the back of the truck. The whole box of the truck. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> His truck's never seen with a uh, with a trailer on it. No, oh, it's true. He carries logs with him, doesn't he? I have no idea. I don't I th- think you ever see him driving it. No, oh, yeah, maybe not. But. I think he just pretends that he's a truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford a moving truck. <laughs> <laughs> we bring Maddie into the fray. There's the duck again. Did you see it? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I missed it again. Yeah. It's At like first, I had no summer. idea what it was. <laughs> oh, really? Like it didn't did it look like something. It, else? It, it just looked like a strange creature. Only until I saw it from like another angle did I say, "Oh, I think it's a duck." <laughs> where, where is it placed exactly? It's like dead center. It's the ugliest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of a booth. We have to remember this time to check it out, Matt. I hate when. I'll write it down. I hate when this happens in TV shows. She ordered a drink, they put it in front of her, and she didn't touch it, and then they left. <laughs> I've seen yeah. that happen more than once in TV. There's no time in TV, Matt. No time <laughs> to drink. <laughs> no time to go to the bathroom, either. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> here's, a little, here's a little interchange that I, I'd like to recite. Okay. <clears throat> verbatim. <clears throat> Maddie, if I said you can't say a word of this to anyone, not a soul, not even your aunt and uncle, would you be okay? Would that be okay with you? It sounds like some big secret. <laughs> it is. <laughs> While Hank is sitting right behind them, listening to every friggin' single word they're saying. I, re- I re- this little trio of Scooby-Doo detectives, <laughs> I'm so annoyed by. They've never had any FBI training, Brad. You exactly. Yeah. But they have information. They think they might know who the killer is. They're keeping it to themselves and their children. Yeah, I don't know what their deal is. At least Audrey's going out in the mix and, like, trying to work with Cooper. Yeah, that's true. They, I guess they don't trust adults for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. It's a kid thing. It's a kid thing? Yeah. Yeah. Friggin' know-it-alls. They think they're invincible. These rabble-rousing teenagers, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hank was behind them the whole time. His evil music theme playing behind him. And then the Brides of Frankenstein come in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought Norma was a bit better off after that than Shelly, their their spa treatments and pampering. (laughs) Well, her hair was taller, though. I I actually thought Shelly's was more acceptable. (laughs) Norma's hair was was much bigger. I was looking more at the face and the makeup. Oh, okay. I I always focus on hair, it seems. (laughs) Refugee beauty queens are queen refugees. (laughs) (laughs) Invitation to love clip. (laughs) Oh, I have the quote. I have the quote. Okay, go. <laughs> Chester, you little Fruit Loop, you're done. Done. <laughs> slap, slap. <laughs> Bravo. Uh, yeah. You get the, I love that. <laughs> you, you get the feeling that, that that's basically Hank in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, Montana. Is Chester Ed? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who Chester's supposed to be. No, I don't know either. I always thought he looked like Leo. Chester? Chester? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but he's so runty. They have opposite hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the hair is different, but the face, the shape of the face and everything is the same. Yeah, I guess. I always wondered if they'd gotten the same actor to play him, but really? I guess he's, he, he looks different enough. I guess it's not him. All right, so family counseling. I, I love the way the first part of that is shot with the back and forth. That, that was very funny. With his feet up. Well, the going back and forth between uh, um, Bobby's father and mother. Mm, yeah, oh, that was yeah. good. Yeah. The dialogue, you mean? Yeah. 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 What do you think that family's problem is, <laughs> Bobby? 
It started before that, surely. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think Jacoby is good at his job? Or is he just cheating with Laura's tapes? He has, like, incredible insight into Bobby. Oh, he definitely, he definitely knows what's going on already. He seems to know exactly what happened. He's like, did you cry after sex? Did Laura laugh? Did she do this? Did she do that? It's like, yeah, how did you know that? <laughs> That's what I would have asked, but Bobby did. Yeah. And then Bobby completely breaks down. Yeah. Was that believable to you guys? The valiant effort at crying? Not everyone can cry, but... Oh, I'm very good at crying on cue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see it. Go. <laughs> or hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. It's not. It's not really that hard. But the thing is, it's like, I feel like Dr. Jacoby is where all these people are trying trying to solve this Laura Palmer mystery. Yeah. I feel like whatever, you know, this creepy uh, darkness about Laura Palmer is, I feel like Jacoby not only wants to know more, Mm. but I feel like he wants to tap into whatever the hell she was into. Oh, so he can use it for his evil league of evil. evil. For his evil league of evil with (laughs) robot towels. (laughs) (laughs) Also... Who did Bobby kill? Oh yeah, yeah. He asked, "Did you ever kill anyone, Bobby?" So he must have. And yeah, we've heard. And um, didn't uh, Laura tell James, like in the yeah. pilot, that Bobby had killed someone? Yes, and so she must have told that to Jacoby, I guess. But as to who he killed, well, can't say. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so spoilerific. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any opinions on this part? Caitlin? Um, I think that Jacoby was able to handle Bobby's family pretty well, you know, that he wanted to talk to them separately, because he just re- I, all he really wanted to do was talk to Bobby, but he handled his parents very well. Yeah, do you think he's trying to help Bobby at all, or is he just trying to further his own investigation? Definitely the latter. I, I don't like he said, you know, he's never much interested in helping people or their problems or anything. Yeah. I think he's definitely just in it for his own interests. Yeah. I was gonna say he's trying to penetrate deeper into her secret. But don't penetrate! <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> well, that's the word he used. <laughs> it looks um in this scene it looks like Bobby's wearing a priest collar. Yeah, it kind of did. Yeah. Which is a creepy visual. But it's kind of an interesting insight on Laura's character that she laughed at Bobby yeah. the first time they had sex, mm-hmm. and that he, they also said that she wanted to die. Yeah, and she he said she made him sell drugs. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that. But. Yeah, you tough football boy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It definitely seems like she broke him. <laughs> she broke Bobby. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Also, the uh, when they said that she tried to be good, but she always got pulled back to the dark side. In the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> and she preyed on weaknesses and corrupted people. She sounds like a terrible person. Mm. But she always tried to be good, though. It's kind of like a dual kind of... <laughs> con- con- conflict going on there. I don't know. Yeah, uh, she might be bipolar. Maybe. <laughs> Could be. I feel like I like we're getting all this stuff about Laura having uh, having dark secrets and being, you know, having this whatever darkness to her. I like. I don't know. Like this bothers me because I feel like I don't know if, if this plays out, and I'm sure it will. That there's something you know much more sinister going on with her. Yeah then I'm okay with this. But otherwise, it feels like we're doing this weird uh, victim-blaming thing going on. Yeah, she, I, don't, I don't know how she could keep all this darkness from people that they're describing. Right. I mean, if, if, unless she's really super evil, I kind of don't like the way everyone's portraying her. Most people think of her as, you know, like, little angel, you know. I think to the good people in the town, she seemed she portrayed herself to be good, but to the darker side of the town, I think she just kind of let it all loose. Mm, and those two worlds never crossed over. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we get Washington foggy mountains cut to California dry, sunny footpath. <laughs> That's just a note, a note for me and other people that that bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just you, Matt. Probably just me. <laughs> is anyone out there that, that bugs as much as me? Let me know. <laughs> and they show up at the wrong cabin. Or the right cabin. Ooh, oh, good yes. one, Caitlin. Her log doesn't judge. <laughs> that was so awesome when the log lady just popped out. I loved it. Mm. Yeah, it was, and they nearly shot her. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a shame. <laughs> uh, her, lo- her log would have jumped in, in the way and saved her. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Slow motion. <laughs> it would have grown into a full tree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, it's got powers. <laughs> yeah. So she says so much crazy stuff that I don't know where to begin. Um, I want to begin with Hawk wants a cookie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Please, guys, we have to stay for cookies. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold up, guys. What kind? <laughs> we're in it we're in it to win it so she, men- she mentions owls a lot so she is aware of those robo owls that Jacoby sent out mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm so happy with the birds in this episode <laughs> we're so gonna confuse the viewers with these robo owl theories <laughs> well not if they listen to the previous episode of I guess podcast. not no no but <laughs> yeah what do you make of all the owl talk seems owls are actually significant I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. we, have, we, have the, we have the crow right um, as they come up to a log lady's cabin, too. Mm-hmm. And then the, the crow when they go to the other cabin as well. There's lots of birds! What do they mean? They're the spies for the enemy. <laughs> for the evil legion of evil! <laughs> <laughs> she says, uh, shut your eyes um, and you'll burst into flames. Nonsense. And then she, yeah, and then she says something about the devil uh, hiding in flames or in fire or something. Well, that's probably a reference maybe to the fire walk with me thing or something. Right. I'm guessing that her husband was killed by fire because she said, my husband was a logger and he met the devil. Fire's the devil hiding in the smoke. Fire, bad. Uh, you, shut, you shut your eyes, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll burst into flames. Maybe he fell asleep and uh, got caught in a fire while logging. Maybe. He passed out mid, mid-axe swing. And the owls watched it happen. Oh. And they didn't help, but they could have. <laughs> Damn owls. I thought I read somewhere else that he was a firefighter, but maybe that's oh, just really? a, a different canon or something, but I don't know. Either way, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> so she recounts what she saw, or what her log saw. Can I mention that she what? said that they were two days late, too? Yeah, they were two days late. They were two days late. Was it their fault because of Dale's faux pas at the, with the log at the diner? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she would have told them then. Yeah, because he was ex- especially rude to her log. Yeah. Indeed. Anyway. I think that's what Hawk was trying to prevent there when he stopped Cooper from talking and asked about the cookies. Yeah, yeah that's true. Coop, you don't have proper log etiquette. <laughs> so yeah, she recounts what she what happened. She heard laughing, owls were flying, flashlights came by her cabin, I guess. Two men, two females, and then later one more man came by and she heard screaming. So how did that play out in your mind? What do you think happened? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Do you have a scenario? In my mind, like, it's been, since since the pilot, and I think I said this on our first episode, I feel like um, there were two two events happening. One with uh, Laura and uh, Ronette, and then something else happened to mix things up. So I'm guessing whoever this third guy was is the one that either freed uh, Ronette or killed Laura Palmer. Okay. Or both. You still believe it's a um, sort of ritual sacrifice kind of thing, too, or...? I was hoping they'd have a tea party with dolls, too. With dolls? Like a crazy one, you know? (laughs) Oh, yeah. She would have had dolls sit in each chair. They would have kind of had to lift up the doll and put it on their knees, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Or she goes, like, full Miss Haversham. (laughs) Have some cake. (laughs) Well, there's no cake. Oh, there is no cake. No, only cookies. We should mention how Dale translated that whole log lady spiel translated well how he he saw it like as being like two men two women and then he said the footsteps were a separate man how would he know that it was a separate man you know what i mean it could have been one of the guys well didn't didn't she say she heard one other person later after the two men and two women maybe no. but i don't it didn't seem that specific to me that it was an, a different person no. i don't know yeah, yeah that's kind of what i was thinking as well yeah mm. so then they find the correct cabin I love Dr. Hayward's stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculously large. <laughs> he, is. he is a very small man, though. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. I love they keep they keep and they keep telling him to hold back. It's like, don't worry, old man, stay there with your stick. <laughs> <laughs> Stick's not as useful as a gun, I guess. No, it's not as good of a weapon. <laughs> Unless it's a magic staff, like Gandalf or something. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't. You're I, getting ahead of yourself there, Matt. <laughs> I don't think Hayward is is Gandalf. <laughs> no. Uh, Thou shalt not make diet lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, he's Moses. <laughs> he 
parts to the lasagna. Uh, <laughs> parts to lasagna. <laughs> um, yeah, there's always music in the air from the dream. So we have that clue, and what else? The red drapes clue. Are these helpful clues, you think? No. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, again, like... This, it's all it's all cool, you know, seeing it after the fact. But these clues he's getting from his dream are completely useless. <laughs> well, maybe they're just like useful as a as, as a narrative device. I give you that works wonderfully, and it 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 works writing wise. No, I mean for him himself, like if if he keeps yes. coming across these things, he'll know that he's on the right path. Yes, confirmation. Confirmation of it's all confirmation bias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just reading into things and seeing things where there isn't. Right. <laughs> also, like, um, that record player... Now, I, again, because I haven't used a record player in my life <laughs> <laughs> that I remember, um, can you set a record player to repeat a track like that? Uh, I didn't think so normally, but maybe there was some models of records players that could do it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could rig something up, but it just seems like that song we just kept playing over and over. Would drive you to insanity if you were living in that cabin. <laughs> well, I mean, just, like, how would you set, how, like, it didn't seem to be set up that way. It seemed like it was just playing, as though someone had just been in the cabin. Possibly. You vamoosed. Well, if anybody out there knows a lot about record players, they can let us know, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Well, it seemed to be when they got into the... We heard it right when it was just ending the song, and it looked like the record player went back to the beginning. I don't know. I don't think it'd be... I think it seems reasonable for a record player. That wouldn't be a particularly complex thing to be able to do. Mm. Yeah. So what do they find in there? Find Waldo, uh, a f- camera with film in it, yep. blood, twine, and poker chips. Yeah, <laughs> poker chip with a, a chunk out of it. Hidden inside of a clock. <laughs> what were they doing in there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. quite the party. I want to know what's on that camera, but the film's open and exposed, so I guess we won't find out. Uh, so we go to the party at the Great Northern. Yeah, Pete seems seems to find Catherine's alcoholism kind of amusing. <laughs> yeah. like he's like, go oh, easy on the sauce tonight, will ya, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, whatever, and he just kind of chuckles at her mm. while she drinks. What's, what's keeping that marriage together? I don't know, but he seems to find her cute, though, when she drinks. I, don't I know love why. you when you're sloshed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's like he's blackmailing her just to keep the money flowing <laughs> because he can. He and he hates her un- just enough to stay with her. You think he hates her? Yes. <laughs> or is that just you hate her? <laughs> no, I think I think he clearly doesn't like her. But I don't know. He he looked at her in fondness as she, as she walked away with her second drink. <laughs> I don't know. He just kind of chuckled and kind of just, aww, so cute. <laughs> or maybe not so cute, but just, aww, that's, that's my Catherine. <laughs> There's the alcoholic again. <laughs> yeah, aww. Audrey's spying again, and she witnesses the unsexy sex time for herself and somehow doesn't barf. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a weird reaction, though. At first, she seems distressed and upset by it, but yeah. then... I don't know. Either She's... amused or shocked enough to uh, deal with it, or she really, I don't know. she really enjoyed her father getting smacked. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed that too. Actually, I enjoyed his expressions, yeah. one for each slap. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like, if I mean, he's already cheating on his wife, and the mistress is upset about it. <laughs> I just, I feel like if if you're cheating on a on someone uh, that's married. I feel like you should not be that shocked that they're going to see prostitutes as well. Right. You always think you can change a person. <laughs> I think she was upset at first, though, because, you know, it was her dad. But then she laughs, I think, because she's like, Haha, I got more information on, on you know, but what for the, my investigation. But what did that have to do with Laura Palmer? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's just more information that she kind of gets to have. Mm. It's just shenanigans with the mill. <laughs> yeah. She's still accomplishing more in these investigations than uh, James and Don <laughs> and mm. Creepo Maddie. That's true. Creepo Maddie. <laughs> uh, we see another one of Jerry's crazy shirts with this little Cupid pin <laughs> on the collar. <laughs> he says, I want to cook for you. <laughs> yes, that's the, probably the worst pickup line I've ever heard. Well, it's especially it's... considering the salmonella that's going into this cooking. Yes. Yeah. He is a foodie, yeah. I like his other pickup line, too. Should we take a dip in each other's respective <laughs> gene pool? 
is terrible. Can I just say, ew? <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't seem opposed. No, she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> I like little troll men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's, she is a giant compared to him. Yeah. Mm. Um, I also noticed that Pete loves milk. He's got a huge <laughs> beer mug full of milk. Really? Yeah. Oh. He's was just like at, just talking to it, somebody, drinking all this milk. Was it milk or like eggnog? Um, I'm hoping it was milk, because <laughs> eggnog's kind of. <laughs> Eggnog just disturbs me. Eggnog's not in season. <laughs> no. <laughs> Plus, it's disturbing. I like it. I find it disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want to drink raw eggs and stuff? So, who started that music? Yeah. <laughs> and it seemed to come out of nowhere. <laughs> trying to drive Leland insane. He's starting a new dance trend. <laughs> I thought that... Well, I was really surprised that Catherine went along with what uh, Horn told her to do, because... She's not particularly happy with him, and yeah, yeah. But she was a trooper. <laughs> she went at that dancing like <laughs> she had nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah, well, she was a bit tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like Leland is like under some weird hypnosis. Yeah, because every time he hears the music, it, like he's dancing, and then there's like this weird the creepiness of like that he's like breaking down and crying, like he doesn't want to be dancing, but he has to. He has no control over himself. He's a puppet, but who's the puppet master? Mm. Mm. <laughs> and why would they want to make him dance and cry all the time? <laughs> Please. I'm tired of dancing. <laughs> I'm so tired of dancing. I hate swing music. Wasn't there a disease? You are good at crying. <laughs> wasn't, there, wasn't there a disease, though, that like made people dance in the Middle Ages? Like, yeah, uncontrollably yeah. dance? There's a dance Saint Vit- Vitus's dance or something? Yeah. I think that's called what? Broadway musicals. <laughs> yeah, I know. In the Middle Ages, like there was this disease that made people dance like, like randomly. Flash mobs of people dancing. It yeah. was a form of mass hysteria. Yeah. Wow. What were you going to say, Caitlin? Sorry, anyways, just a random. <laughs> no, it's just really weird. I, I think you're going to have to do some research on this. <laughs> the, the mass <laughs> dancing? <laughs> I'll present a paper on the Facebook page. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I like how they, uh, yeah, they fired him because of uh, his new dance trend that he started. Did they fire him? It looks like they, they were like. Get rid of this guy. Well, they were like, get him out of here. Well, no, but they wanted to get rid of him, it seemed like, for good. <laughs> for good? Yeah, I, for good? I don't know. It I think they said something like, uh, yeah, I don't want to see him in here ever again. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah, for good. good. <laughs> but who was he talking to? Was he talking to Jerry, who wasn't listening and just started dancing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's like, who cares? Let's all dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it, I'll do it, just right after this dance. <laughs> you think Cooper was upset he didn't get an invite? <laughs> Big event going on, he's the FBI guy, a uh, celebrity. Well, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to associate with those Icelandic people or two. He's still pissed. <laughs> so Maddie found an extra tape. No, go back. What? The only person said for Leland is Audrey. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. What'd you guys make of that? What's she crying about? She... I mean, you know, the thing is, like, it really is... It is kind of disturbing and upsetting watching this guy fall apart. Yeah. Um, like, it's hard to take it seriously in the fact that it's so over the top that I, I don't quite understand it. Mm. Um, but I think if you were just in the mindset of this man is just really emotionally broken, I think it's pretty upsetting. And I could see that, uh, you know, She's, affecting someone. She seemed to be the only person in that entire room that s- saw what was happening. Everyone else... Right. It's like they didn't notice he was crying as he was dancing. They just saw the dance. Those Icelanders must be really stupid. (laughs) No, they're just ruthless. Ruthless and drunk. And drunk. (laughs) David Lynch also hates. David Lynch also hates Icelanders. Uh Maybe (laughs) racist. What'd you say, Caitlin? Oh, I was just making a comment about the Icelanders. But as Jerry said, we are all Icelanders. Yeah. (laughs) I don't want to be one of them. <laughs> I want to know if historically this is true. <laughs> <laughs> more, more history. <laughs> yeah, so they found an extra tape. Yep. <laughs> I like Maddie's slippers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right back to the 90s, which it was, but, you know, everybody in the 90s had, like, big cat feet slippers like that. Did she Did she mention where she found it? What, the tape or the slippers? Yeah, no, the tape. <laughs> I think she said in the bedpost because Laura used to keep cigarettes there. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I couldn't remember if she said where, 
she found it, but if she didn't say, I was going to mention that. Yeah, that's in the diary. She keeps stuff in there. But uh, she keeps the what? she keeps the tape in the in the in the um, bedpost, right? Yeah, yeah. But but she so is this box? Did she just have this box on her, or where did the box come from? Maybe it all fit in the bedpost. I don't. It's a large <laughs> bedpost. <laughs> Josie and Horn rendezvous. Mm. So. What do you think's happening? Okay. Ben Horn is playing Catherine Martell. Yeah. And that the arson that he has asked Leo to do, he's actually going to blame it on Catherine. Okay. So you think he's with Josie? Yes. Okay. What do you think, Brad? I, I agree, but I think he may be uh, playing both of them. Uh, against each other? Right. Mm-hmm. So then he then he can just fly, you know, sweep in and bam, he's got everything he wants. Mm. But also, I think there may be an element of Josie um, knows what's going on and is and is uh, under orders from uh, Hank to have part of this as well. Mm. But what does ha- what does Hank have over Josie? A domino of evil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the way he um the the last episode ended um with him uh, calling her and the weird picture of the domino. I think uh, he's got something over her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she didn't. That phone call that Hank made to her after it, she didn't seem like... She just seemed sort of subdued. Like, she she wasn't going to do anything. She's just like, oh, darn. <laughs> yeah. Chicken's coming home to roost in some way or another. I think she's got a domino implanted in her brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everybody no. that's under Hank's power has a domino in their brain. <laughs> and Leland's has gone faulty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> bad domino implants cause weird dancing crazes. <laughs> oh, my domino! <laughs> <laughs> Hank beat up Leo. He's got control over him. I'm wondering if there's some sort of hierarchy involved. Well, obviously Hank's above Leo because he's yes. like, I told you to mind the store, not open the franchise. Yeah, what was Leo going to do with that gas, do you guys think? Um... It looked like me, like, he was either going to fill up his truck or burn something down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe it was uh, for the for the mill. Well, yeah, somebody's been hired to burn down the mill at at a specified time. I think they've already shown Ben and Leo talking to each other about Yeah. It, so that's probably... I guess, yeah, I couldn't really tell where he was either, though. So was he at the mill at that point? No, that was his house. His house, okay. He keeps a whole crap load of flammable material underneath his house. That's... That's really smart. <laughs> yeah, does not seem like the best of ideas. Especially as, as dry as California is. <laughs> <laughs> Full of pine needles and stuff? My god. Oh, manzies. <laughs> One good forest fire. He's asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> so it turns out, Caitlin was right from the way back when I asked her about it. Shelly did have the guts. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't see what part of him she hit, though. Mm. So <laughs> is he dead or is he injured? <laughs> Yes. If, or even is he even hit at all? If, I don't know. Yeah. Well, if he did die, that was the weakest death cry I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sound, though. Like, it sounded pretty rough. <laughs> I just imagine, like, she hit him in the jaw and, like, his face is messed up. <laughs> found it just sounded like a really angry cat. She shot a cat behind him. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think's gonna happen to Leo? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Don't like him there, Caitlin? Nope. Not one bit. <laughs> Don't blame you. I wonder what's gonna happen to Shelly now. Yeah. Yeah, she shot a man. If he's not dead. Also, like, he was... Um, If he goes unconscious or anything, he was already pretty beat up from Hank, which is not gonna look good in on for her. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they'll believe that she beat up Leo, though. She beat well, she, but if he, he he's clearly already been beaten up before he was shot, mm. and she doesn't have a mark on her. Yeah. yeah. Sneak attack. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she threw said cat in his face <laughs> and then shot him, and it went through right through the cat. Oh, poor kitty. I know. Sad. I swear, <laughs> off. I swear, officer, he fell down and hit his head on the door, and then a cat jumped at him. <laughs> And I tried to shoot the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I hit him in the face. But I have terrible aim. <laughs> so then we go back to the Great Northern. Any comments? Surprise! <laughs> I'm waiting for ya. 
Cooper. My first, <laughs> my first thought was that Audrey is messed. Uh, that that I think it was how upset she was after uh, watching her father and then seeing Leland break down. Yeah. And it was my thought that she's trying to seek some sort of comfort or exert control somehow. Naked comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy comfort. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like she's at a weak moment. So mm. yeah. What did you think when you saw that, Brad? He's 18. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. What do you, how do you think he's going to handle it? I think that Cooper will send her on her way and just tell her to leave. Maybe try and comfort her a little through words. But uh, he will, yeah, get her to get on out. But at the same time, Cooper's had a long, stressful day. <laughs> a lot of frustrations in that day. Yeah. There will be conflicting feelings. For sure. Hmm. Anyone got anything else before we close that episode out? Nope. How would you guys rate this episode? Go ahead. Uh, you go first, Mel. Oh. Uh, uh, 8.5 out of 10, Salmonella riddled leg of lambs. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that legs of lamb? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where the plural goes. Either way, it'll kill you. <laughs> I was going to give it a nine. No, I just don't feel that it's, I don't know. What made you subtract maybe half a point? Maybe I'm just really tired today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, Caitlin? Uh, I'm going to give it a nine silicone earplugs out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> so you like this one? I really enjoy seeing the log lady. I think she's a boon to every episode she's in. <laughs> <laughs> well. And yeah. An interesting plot development with uh, on a couple of the friends there. So yeah, yeah. It, it, when they keep yeah keep introducing like new possibilities with the murder. So does the one that you're watching have the log lady intros on it? No. No. Okay. I see that you guys keep talking about that on the Facebook page, but yeah. I we don't even watch. We don't I, even I, watch them. Though. I don't watch them. I skip them because they don't make any sense <laughs> to me. They might make sense to somebody, but they're just like that little scene with the tea party. <laughs> she just keeps doing stuff. <laughs> I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 crazy lady tea parties. I like this one a lot. Yeah. This first season is really good overall, I think. Mm. Go ahead, Brad. I think I would have to go, uh, oh, I'll say 9 out of 10 uh, ceiling magazines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a solid, solid episode overall, and it yeah definitely it, I like the pace. Yeah, you know, and uh, a lot of good stuff came to fruition in this one. Yeah, maybe I should. St- oh, it's a terrible reason for giving and subtracting half a point. I'm too tired. It's <laughs> not. That's not the show's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I watched it sleepy. Yeah. You might like it now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I should probably give it a 9 out of 10. And it's not peer pressure, guys. I swear. Okay. <laughs> Who's got quotes? Okay, I got one. Now let me get this straight. Your entire country is above the timberline? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he lives for wood. I've got one here. Little James and uh, Donna. <gasps> yes. <laughs> She's out there, wandering like a restless spirit. I feel it too. We owe it to her. <laughs> was, was there an O. James in there? <laughs> oh, James. Oh, James. <laughs> I feel it too. I know it's yeah. You gotta add that if in. If she didn't say it, she, de- <laughs> she definitely thought of it. Yes. yes. She, every time she looks at him, that's just it just repeats in her mind over and over. <laughs> oh, James. It's on a loop. Oh, James. Oh, James. <laughs> She's oh, James. a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her Domino's malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's not that good. Because uh, we already used most of the ones that were good. Uh... Fellas, let's pack a lunch. We're going to take a walk in the woods. <laughs> Boy time. <laughs> Your turn. Look at this. You see what she gave me? An entire leg of lamb. <laughs> Put some rosemary, some crushed garlic on it. Rotisserie heaven. <laughs> you didn't mention the salmonella. No, no salmonella. wonder how many recipes require salmonella as an ingredient. <laughs> I have other quotes, too. Okay, go. Harry, you're all right. <laughs> I think he said that more than once. Yes, but I enjoyed I enjoyed it, this, especially this time around. Anyone else got anything? Anything else? Watch your step there, city boy. Who said that? <laughs> I think it was... I couldn't tell, but I think it was Hawk saying it to Cooper, which I thought was really funny. Why? Was he, was he about to step in a cow patty? 
I think it was when they were going under that tree that had yeah. fallen over or something. I've got the whole the whole quote when then she was like, I've got tea, I've got cookies, no cake. That's very kind of you, ma'am, but we have to wait. What kind of cookies? <laughs> sugar. <laughs> <laughs> she says sugar with like such condescension too. It's like sugar. Sugar. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you <little> savage. Is <laughs> there, is what there... other kind of cookie would you yeah. want me to have? <laughs> There's other cookies? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just realized, did Dale drink some tea? <gasps> oh, I'm surprised he didn't explode. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it was probably highly caffeinated tea. Yeah, it would have to be. Definitely. Any other quotes? I already said it, but go easy on the sauce tonight, will you, Kathy? <laughs> Oh, and uh, this one, we mentioned it, but, uh... However, it just goes to prove a point that once a traveler leaves his home, he loses almost 100% of his ability to control his environment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cooper's so anal retentive. <laughs> <laughs> Who killed Laura Palmer? Go, Caitlin. Oh, I don't know this episode. Who would you say last time? Donna. <laughs> Still Donna? As far as you can... Um... No. No? I'm... Well, she's... I'm still suspicious, but she's not in the forefront of my mind this episode. She's not, but you don't know who is? Yes. Okay. What about you, Brad? All right. Uh, I'm going to say Leland. Oh, yeah? Why? I'm going to say he found out that Laura wasn't his daughter. (laughs) Oh? And in fact, she was twins. (laughs) Because identical cousins don't make sense. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) And uh, there was some big crazy commotion, and in the process, he accidentally killed uh, who he thought was his own daughter. All right. That's really interesting, because I have a theory, not on the death of Laura, but just on things in general. Okay, I also thought that Maddie and Laura, well, Laura had a twin, but Maddie was a twin, and that they were separated because of birth for some reason, I don't know why, Mm. but... So Leland and Sarah aren't actually her parents, but they couldn't have children. And so they got Laura and they're so like happy after being so distraught, after not having children that when she dies, they just can't handle it because it's a whole nother deal of stress. Nice, nice. All right, cool. I'm going to say this, no offense to anybody that has a twin or that, you know, knows a twin, but twins are a little creepy. (laughs) They're so in in tune to each other, you know what I mean? It's kind of... Some of them are, yeah. Yeah. They claim to be able to know what the other one's thinking or know where they yeah. are or know if they're okay or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, just the just the idea of uh, being, like, first of all, having such, uh, you know, similar genetic makeup and then being raised together at the same time, that, that accounts for a lot of weirdness. Mm. Feedback. All right. Scott Spencer sent us something on the Facebook page. He says... He'd like us to discuss Ed's relationship with Nadine and how he feels about Norma, as well as the possible implications of Hank's return to Twin Peaks. I think we kind of covered that one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you think Audrey's investigation will lead her? I think she, I think if anyone figures it out, it'll be her. Really? You think she's gonna get there before Coop? Either that or they'll join forces. She'll definitely she'll definitely get there before uh, James and Donna. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but they have the tape. Which they'll keep to themselves, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> That'd be funny. They, they find out who it is, and they just keep that, too. <laughs> they think they already know. That's the worst part. Yeah. Are you going to say something, Caitlin? Yes. The tape probably is just a film about owls. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Stuart Everson on Gmail. He says, Hi, podcasters. Okay. So I guess you will have covered most of the important points in this episode by now, so I won't go into too much detail on specific parts. I thought this episode was definitely one of the best in the series. A lot of the build-up from previous episodes starts to pay off here, as Coop and the gang make some serious progress in the case locating the cabin where the final night's night's events played out. Audrey has also got a job at the perfume department. Was wondering what Brad and Caitlin think this could lead to. Did we cover that? Yeah. Sort of. They, they think, you guys think that she's going to be more successful than Donna and James? Um, yes. I don't know how much she'd find out at the perfume counter, though, because um, her dad's bound to find out. Mm. I think that she's going to be working there, and like she may get something from like the other girls who work there if there's something devious going on, but mm. I think that avenue might be limited. How far do you guys think sh- she would go, though, like, in order to find out what she wants to know? Do you think she'd go, like, as far as, like, 
going beyond the perfume counter. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if she actually, uh, you know, goes up to One Eye Jacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think she, I don't think she's gonna work in the industry, but. Uh... <laughs> Mm, there is now three separate investigations going on. Cooper and the police. Oh, one, Cooper and the police. Two, Audrey. Three, Donna, Madeline, and Shudder. <laughs> James. <laughs> Do the first time listeners have any opinions on who will get there first? 213. 213. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm with Brad. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do think Dr. Jacoby will get there before <laughs> Laura. <laughs> I mean, before uh, James and Donna. Oh, they should have put... He should have put them, uh, him in there. <laughs> uh, he also says, I'm curious to know the opinions of Brad and Caitlin as to how they see these investigations panning out. Is anyone going to be successful? Do they see the crime being a straightforward one, or do they think they will be left with more questions than answers at the end of the series? You think it's going to be a straightforward crime, or is it, like, really convoluted, you think? I feel it's got to be pretty complex just because of all the parties involved. Yes, I definitely, yeah, think that this in no way will be straightforward. There's just so many stories going on that even though they might not be directly involved with Laura's murder, they will affect what happened. And just for the sake of putting together a show that's based so much on one central event, I mean, we have you know these other stories going on, but they are very closely related. I feel like it's got to be pretty uh, splintered in how it eventually pans out. Finally, just some stuff I noticed from the episode. There is a secret cop hand signal for donuts. What? <laughs> 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 When Cooper, that was in the letter that was me. <laughs> when Cooper and the gang are in the house searching for evidence, Cooper asks Harry to get some donuts. Harry then makes a hand signal to Andy, which Andy immediately recognizes and fetches some donuts. <laughs> donuts have become so integral to the investigations that they don't even have time to use words anymore. I wonder what kind of hand signal that was. He, w he made like an O with his finger. An O? <laughs> with his two fingers, his thumb and his... And his index? Yeah. I think this. I think this says a lot about what's going on in, with Twin Peaks. They have the time to sit around and make special hand gestures. They've already got the tear thing. Now they've got a. They've got a, a donut sign. I. These kids are not. It's their gang sign, though. It's the bookhouse gang sign. I feel like they. They probably have meetings to get together and make up funny handshakes. Yes. <laughs> Moving on, Leo seemingly has a speed habit. Shelly says to him on the phone, You know how paranoid you get when you've been popping bennies. <laughs> this, this could explain a lot. That's a good point. Like, how did he know that someone had been over there? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. He's got contacts, though. The idea that someone's watching watching the house. Yeah. That means he, pro he very well knows that uh, um, Bobby is going over there. But you'd think that if he did know, that he'd be much more angry than that. I think he just has a sneaking suspicion, I think. Mm -hmm. We find out a little too much about the bopper's sex life. <laughs> 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 By boppers, I'm assuming he means... Uh... Bobby. Okay. Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. His we haven't it's... seen Mike in a while. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, his best friend, yeah. Or Nadine, really, I guess. They but... kind of fell on the wayside. he returned return someday. Yes. <laughs> Cooper's observation skills get even more incredible after he recognizes Leo's truck from the Flesh World magazine cover. Yes, we noticed that too. <laughs> we find out what we knew all along. James is a liar. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Stuart Everson. You can go ahead, Caitlin, I guess. Okay, and we have an email here from Matthias. The most important scene in this episode is the one between Jacoby and Bobby. Did Laura want to die? Did Bobby lie to Jacoby? What was corrupting her? What drove this beautiful, popular, and rich girl to prostitution and drugs? What was she fighting when she did good things? Meals on wheels, helping Johnny. Okay, so I'll answer some of those questions. You I don't know. I, we talked about kind of what we thought of Laura. I said she, I thought she was bipolar. Mm. What's causing her to do these things? Any ideas? It seems like for a lot of these youth in Twin Peaks that they don't have good guiding figures. Mm. That could be. But, <laughs> what is going on? Where are all the parents? Yeah. And maybe it's uh, being uh, separated from her twin sister that's given her uh, emotional issues. Yes. There's mm -hmm. something she, missing. She knows she doesn't belong. Okay, continuing with the email. 
James is the only one next to Cooper who have realized that the adults' lives are something bad and want to be frank with Donna from the beginning. Is James too good for Twin Peaks? Ugh. <laughs> no, he should leave. <laughs> well, he's so good that he has to leave. Another thing on James and his and his family and their secrets. He talks about his mother. Um, she's an alcoholic. She goes to other cities and and drinks, and then sleeps with a bunch of men. It. Okay, she doesn't seem to be prostituting herself. She just seems to be sleeping around and getting drunk. That's bad, too. <laughs> but that's her life. That's <laughs> yeah. her choice. Don't judge. Yeah. But, but <laughs> Don't she's begrudge a... her her joy. <laughs> but she's leaving her son at home all by himself, and he's getting into biker gangs and stuff. But he's like 17 <laughs> years old. That's he can be left alone for a weekend. That's true. But it makes him sad. <laughs> she's probably uh-huh. been doing this since like he was little, too, though. Yeah. But he doesn't seem, like, to me, he doesn't seem that messed up. Like, right. he's messed up, but he doesn't, like, he seems to be kind of good-hearted and stuff. I feel like maybe she dumped him off with Ed and, you know, Nadine for, you know, for every weekend, but, which is, you know, whatever, but... Yeah. He clearly has family looking out for him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though they're crazy. <laughs> James, stop judging your family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like one thing he said earlier, I told you that my dad died when I was 10. He didn't die. He was a musician. <laughs> Is that so terrible? <laughs> but he also said he was a bum musician. So they... <laughs> yes. Again, what, how do you know that? You were 10 years old. And your mother told you that he was a bum musician. Maybe he just wanted to get away from your mother. Maybe. Email continuing. Is there any location that you find particularly creepy? Do you feel that something terrible might happen when we're at the Great Northern, the Martell's house, the woods, the police station, the Palmers, the RR, etc.? The the cabin was definitely creepy. The cabin and the the woods in general and stuff? Yeah, the red red curtain cabin. Mm. Yeah, that was definitely creepy. The Palmer's house is definitely one place I would not want to be. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, my that's mine too. It does have an air of dread. I can't explain mm-hmm. it because they haven't really shown anything specific. Well, they've shown like, they've shown squirrely like, peasant man and they've shown I guess. Yeah, and they've just shown different creepy, visions, sh- visions and creepy stuff. shots of fans. <laughs> yeah, but it's just got <laughs> a right. really I don't know. Gives me a shudder every time they go in there. Mm. Okay, and the final part of the email. The log lady says there are two days. They are two days late. Would she have told them something else two days ago? Um, and in brackets, the day for the events in episode three. Good luck with recording, Matthias Sweden. I don't think she. Well, her information wouldn't have been different. I don't think. <laughs> the same same thing just, I heard er- some just earlier just earlier <laughs> <laughs> they, maybe they would have stumbled across something else had they pursued what she told them earlier maybe mm. how, how about how many days are we past the murder at this point do we think it's roughly the same amount of episodes so it, yeah. it could Coming be up on a week could be yeah it could be five six seven around there i think right. i don't know if it's exactly the same amount of episode days as episodes but it's, it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. We know that. How do we know that? Because uh, Audrey should be in school on a Wednesday. All right. Yeah. Yes. I just rem- remembered something what? in the in the scene where Maddie um, calls well James or Donna. I'm not sure who she was calling, but Donna, I think. Yeah, but you could hear uh, Laura's mother in the background yelling at Leland. Could you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She was saying something Leland like. Yelling yeah. at him in a bad way. I don't know. I couldn't really quite make it out. Well, I think she had like heard the noise and was calling for Leland because she thought that it was him. And yeah. Then... Oh. All right. Uh, you want to go ahead, Brad? This one's from Claire. Uh, hello again, everyone. Racked my brains for points this time. So episode six. This is more like it. This is my favorite opening scene of any of the sh- of any episodes of the show. I love the grumpy, sleep-deprived Cooper. Particularly wearing a wife beater. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, here are some questions. What do you think of the relationship between Audrey and Cooper so far? Is there a bit more flirting on Cooper's side now? Or am I imagining things? I think there is definitely some flirting. Defo. (laughs) How old are you? (laughs) Um, Next question. Uh, Do you really think that Laura corrupted Bobby, as Dr. Jacoby claims? Bobby must have been willing on some level, I think. (laughs) He wasn't totally innocent, I'm sure. I think that she didn't help. No. <laughs> no. Because yeah. I think... 
I think that he did have a certain sense of innocence, and then I think Laura kind of came in and just kind of, kind of was like you know when you when like if you're gonna like have sex with somebody for the first time and they laugh at you, <laughs> and you're all like you know you're crying. No, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. (laughs) But I don't know. It just seems to me like, you know, for him to be crying, like, it just seems like there's a certain sense of, you know, I don't want to sound like gross or cheesy, but like for him, it was a certain sense of wonderment, you know, and for her, it was just like, like, ha ha, you know. (laughs) 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 Ah, I can see the beauty in this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I, I see some, kind of some inconsistency on the way he tells the story sometimes like this was completely different than when he was talking to Shelly at one point before when I think that was the episode when she showed him the bloody shirt and he's like Laura was kind of into something and he thought that there was the drug ring in the school and he was trying to get to the bottom of that but here he's saying oh Laura forced me to get into this Yeah, he's probably trying to hide from Shelly that he's a bad guy too Okay, um, more log lady in this episode. Sugar cookies? Are those even technically cookies? <laughs> she mentions that her husband met the devil, aka fire. Interesting. I think sugar cookies are definitely cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. I mean, um, they are called sugar cookies. Indeed. And Hawk seems very, very happy to receive them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the sound of Julie Cruz singing Into the Night. Is that the name of the song? Yep. Wow. There's a B.B. King song called Into the Night that's one of my favorites. Oh. Um, as they approach the cabin, um, the sorry, the sound of Julie Cruz singing into the night as they approach the cabin is both eerie and beautiful. Who knew that a cuckoo clock could be an effective place to keep poker chips? Yeah, I'm not sure why those were in there. It's kind of random. I wonder, did Waldo bite the poker chip? Is that why there's the piece missing? Well, mm-hmm. they found a piece of a poker chip in Laura's stomach, remember? Because mm-hmm. Dr. Jacoby sent the robot birds to attack her. <laughs> <laughs> they found Waldo. They did. Swing music. More great work from Ray Wise as a man being driven mad with grief. Like the coffin diving scene, the scene in which he cries and dances while everyone is merrily merrily copying him is hilarious and heartbreaking. Twin Peaks at its finest. What do you guys make of the fact that Audrey is also crying while witnessing him? We spoke about that one, unless you have anything else to say. Uh, This is one of my favorite episodes in the first season. Even James and Donna's declaration of love on the bandstand of angst can't ruin it. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh, And she she gives it nine and a half large groups of insane men staying on my floor. (laughs) Nice. Singing at 4 (laughs) a.m. That's from Claire Lafar. That would be a perfect band name. Bandstand of angst. Bandstand of angst. Yeah, it's a good band name. If we ever start a band, Matt, Brad, Caitlin, (laughs) should start a band, guys. (laughs) Bandstand of angst. I'll (laughs) tell you. I'll play the spoons. I'll play the triangle. Yeah. <laughs> I'll play the harmonica. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we should close this one out. It's getting long. <laughs> it is. Oh, wait. Yeah. Um, sorry, we had a couple things on the Facebook group. What was it? Um, didn't someone get this? It seems like people are getting all kinds of stuff out of Twin Peaks, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, didn't somebody get a pie? Oh. I, uh, oh, yeah. That was a good story. That was right. from Claire Lafar. Um, nice. I like that. I like it. I, like you're making it work for you. That's uh, yeah. good. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Didn't Scott Spencer, like, meet a lady, supposedly? Um, I want to say there was something about that. It may have been somebody oh. else, but somebody met a lady. By yeah, that was him. I remember oh. that. Oh! So, yeah, on the Facebook group, Claire Lafar mentioned she has a... On a slightly related note, after complimenting my workplace's apple pie the other day, but mentioning that, as a Twin Peaks fan, some cherry pie would be nice, I just received this email from our catering manager. Hi, Claire. We have damn fine cherry pie on the menu today. Please bring down this email, and you will receive a free Claire's damn fine cherry pie. Regards, Rupert Catering Manager. <laughs> and that then is she awesome. Says, and then she says, made my day. <laughs> <laughs> that is rad. Scott's story is in that thread, by the way. About how you met somebody? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, she, she put that, and then in the comments for that, uh, Scott Spencer put something. He says... Lol. When I was working security in Austin back in the early 1990s, I carried a micro cassette tape recorder with me to help me with incident reports. At an apartment complex in East Austin, I was undercover, wearing a suit and a tie while keeping an eye on the new construction. One evening, one of the girls who I was acquainted with, who lived nearby, came walking in my direction, saw me talking to my recorder and smiled. I smiled back and asked if 
I had something out of place. She said, no, it just looked like you were leaving a message for Diane. I caught the <laughs> reference to Cooper and we had a nice laugh over it. Nice. See, I like that. I, I like... I like the people listening to this show have got mad Twin Peaks game going on. <laughs> yeah, everybody try to pick up with your Twin Peaks knowledge. It might work. Use the <laughs> Twin Peaks flavor, everyone. Use it. All right, anything else? No, I think nope. that's good. Okay. All right, yeah. so let's let's sign off and go watch episode seven. Yeah, seven. And I promise that next time I will try to not let the Icelanders uh, make me lose any sleep. Just like oh. for. <laughs> <laughs> Just drink some coffee. Yeah, I'll drink some coffee next time. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, everyone. See you later. Bye. Thanks for listening. Check us out on twittercom twinpeakscast. Search for the Twin Peaks Podcast group on Facebook, and visit us on twinpeakspodcast.blogspot.com. Email us your feedback at twinpeakspodcast.gmail.com. for you guys. Okay. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.